the new Midjourney editor is on fire. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the amazing world of AI image generation. Today, we're going to check out Midjourney again because their newest tool is actually pretty lit. Let's get started. So if you check out the announcement, you will see that this is available for people who have generated 10,000 images, who are a yearly member, or who have been a monthly subscriber for the last 12 months. And this is actually part of their browser interface, which becomes more and more useful. And personally, I absolutely love it for image generation because, of course, you have all these kind of settings in here. So it's very easy to navigate and, of course, very easy and fluent to use. But over here, you can see you have a new edit function to that. And when you click on that, it is opening up this. You can load images from a URL and you can also upload images from your drive. So this is pretty useful, especially if you want to copy over images from your own creation here on Mid Journey. However, there is no send to editor button right now. And when you go in here to click on an image on the lower right, you do have an editor button here. But when you click on that, you will see this is the old editor that is still, of course, very useful but it only does in painting while the new editor has a retexture function and that is just mm, amazing to play with. So let's go back to that new editor and check out some of the features. So for example, let's upload this image from Pexels and then on the left side, you can see you have move and resize, erase and restore. Now restore is not to restore something in the image. What restore means is if you create a mask in here, you can restore that area basically removing that mask and giving you a finer control over where the mask should be. However, I want to point out here that in general, when you do in painting with Mid Journey, a bigger mask area is better than a very small mask area because it needs kind of a good amount of pixels to actually generate a good result for you. Of course, you also have undo and reset. You can adjust the brush size here and it gives you a nice preview on the screen. You can also scale the image in and out, which helps you without painting. And of course, you have here these side areas where you can drag it over to outpaint the image to that side. And below that here, you also have a selection of different ratios. Click on one by one and you can see it will create a square image out of your image. Now, all that said, with the in painting and extension, it can be a little bit hit and miss. Now, before we go deeper into the in painting, I want to show you the retexture function because that is a lot more fun and it works a lot better. And one thing that might be really helpful to using that retexture function is the suggest prompt function that is only available in the edit tab. So you might want to upload the image in the edit tab, click here on suggest prompt. So it's going to create a description of the photo you try to change. And then you can change the details in that photo. Then over here on the top, you can see you have the retexture tab. So click on that. And there is not really any functionality in here. It only switches over to the retexture function. Now here I said I want to have a winter landscape in here with a lot of snow and also trees covered in snow and I get results like that, which is pretty cool because it allows you to change the photography you have and actually create a new stock image out of that with a completely different scene. So you can be really playful with this. But also another function you can do, for example, I decided on this winter scene, but I wanted to have it wider is, of course, that you can do out painting. And as you can see on the right side, it's always creating four different versions for you so you can decide on the best version for that image, which is also very nice. Let's go back to the in painting where I have created a mask on this right area. And like I said, it's pretty much hit or miss. And it also has a lot to do with Mid Journey having a certain relation between the image you have and this content you want to put into that scene. So for example, here I said I want to have a Santa on the right side. And well, you have to do a lot of like 
testing and trying to get the right one. It's a little bit of a lottery at the moment, but like I said, this is also a new function. It's still in beta testing, so it's not completely there yet. But of course, I also tried a wolf in that scene. And as you can see, because a wolf is better in a forest scene, it of course worked a lot better with these results. And the wolf has the exact same light. It looks pretty realistic. So this is certainly a win. Now, another thing that's important for the functionality here is on the top right, you have the view all button because the images will not be in your normal gallery. So you have to click here to have an overview of everything you have created so far. And then you can click on the image. So for example, here, I have a retexture so you can see that it has the image loaded as the result, but also the image I used as an input. And here's a pretty cool trick I want to show you because on the create page, you can, for example, say in this case here, color book line art, black and white, full screen, thin lines of a male wizard and so on. So you get this kind of drawing here made from thin lines. But you can also go with pencil sketch, in this case of a woman sitting on a throne in a dynamic pose. And I would say from the camera angle and from the drawing style, everything here is beautiful. What I like about the pencil sketch in the line art is it does give too much information about that image so that we can still create a lot of variety from that. And as you can see, I got some pretty fantastic results just with a prompt asking for a digital painting character design of a beautiful queen in a white dress sitting on a throne, cinematic colors, highly detailed sunset. And that looks really fantastic. You get a lot of variety from that different kind of styles. Very, very beautiful what you can create with that. And because it has this underlying drawing, you can then, of course, also always have the same kind of composition, which makes this so useful. And another thing you can do actually here is that on the top here on the left side next to the prompt, you have this little image icon, and this will allow you to upload an image that you you can then use either as a style reference, as an image reference, or as a character reference. So when we look at this image here, I downloaded it to have a similar style and then use it as a style reference. So I got four more images that kind of have a similar style to that one, but in a different variation. So that is pretty amazing. However, I played also around with other functions. For example, I uploaded this kind of image here from Lilith from Diablo 4, and I got this result where I used it, as you can see with this little icon here of the character as a character reference, which also took a little bit of color reference in here and gave me these beautiful full results. They don't look 100% like Lilith, of course, but they take a lot of inspiration. And because of that, give a very dramatic, beautiful kind of demon queen sitting on her throne. I have to say this is pretty amazing as a result. Of course, I tried more things than that. For example, different art styles like this kind of style here. As a style reference, I use this beautiful image here. And as you can see from the results, we got something I find really, really beautiful. And that also fantastic. I love how these abstract shapes are on her body. And also this is very nice with this either an eye or a flower or a sun in the background. It really opens up your imagination. Then I also played around with this photograph of a Klimt painting and also, of course, a adjusting the prompt here to be in the style of Klimt. And as you can see, again, we have some really beautiful results. Now, they are not exactly the style of Klimt, but I would say the result is still pretty crazy. And this is actually not all that we have here because I've uploaded this image here and then have it in the style of the movie Shining by Stanley Kubrick. Look at that. Isn't that like it is taken directly from the movie as a scene? It has the classic style. It has the analog look. It's so crazy that you can get this kind of redesign. And as you know, I also love Lost Places. So here we have an abandoned 
house and also that looks pretty beautiful. I also tried to use this screenshot here of a character puppet but this didn't really work out. The reason for that is this process actually sticking very much to the input shape so you can't really deviate from that and there is also no slider that allows you to set how much this is sticking to the input shape and of course this might lead you to think hey I can use this to colorize old black and white photos and you're almost right because it does work to a certain degree and it looks pretty beautiful but if you actually go back to the original image you can see that the face has changed quite a lot and also the clothing even though it's pretty similar you can see it doesn't have the same pattern so it does actually change the image content so personally I want to say that this retexture function is a new reason to fall again in love with mid journey because it's a ton of fun to play around with that check it out for yourself and post in my discord what you have created with this amazing new function leave a like if you enjoyed this video subscribe if you want to see more amazing ai news like this and thanks for watching bye